Hello, what's going on? Hope you're having a wonderful day, wonderful time of day, whatever time of day it is for you. Listen, I want to let you know that God has blessed this day. It is beautiful. We need to rejoice in it. I want to talk to you right now about practicing how to practice song leading. Um, first, two methods, two methods. And I want to talk about the one that is participatory and the other that is uh, practice at home in private. Participatory is that which you do in public, that which you do in the worship service. How I learned how to be a song leader before I let a song was from I was four years old up until I was 14 years old, which is the first time I had let a song, let a song service. Um, I participated in worship service, morning worship, afternoon worship at three o'clock, Tuesday night Bible study for 10 years, three times a week, 10 years in a row. If it was a gospel meeting, we was there every night. And every time I'd participate and I knew the rhythm, I knew how it went down. I'll give you an example. Um, I actually wrote down um, what the lineup was. Um, I actually wrote it like this. And matter of fact, when I became the, the lead song leader of the congregation, I came with a script based up on this. This was something that I wrote. This, this, this thing right here, let me... Okay, you can see it good. But it says, I, one, two, three, space, four, space, INV, or invitation, short for invitation, C and O, communion offering, and then O for outro. Uh, intro, outro. Now, this line, now, now, now here, here's the way I did this thing. When it came to worship service, this is, I, I just wrote this down. I wrote this down years before I ever led song service. Why did I write it years before I led song service? Because this... This, this was how it was. Now, mind you, at Vine Street, we didn't have a third song here. We have the introduction. We have opening prayer. And then we'd have two songs. And then we'd have, uh, instead of three, two songs. When we got to Overbrook Park, it was three. But then there was the scripture, the prayer, response, uh, scripture, response, reading, prayer, or scripture, and prayer wasn't always response to reading the song before the preacher got up there, the invitation song, communion and offering, and then the closing song. And the reason that uh, we had done it. It was a point in time there was no introduction song, so we just went up there and did what we did. But I mean, I paid attention for years and I wrote that down, So, and I just had it in my mind. Oh, that's how they do it. And see, you participating in worship service means you become familiarized with the process of leading song service at the congregation. You become an active participant in worship service. You see how the reaction of some songs uh, hit certain people, how some songs are better for certain times, how some you learn by watching. And I was very observant. I still am very observant where I learned that way. And that's the first way you can practice song leading. Now, when we talk about practicing song leading in terms of the private, we're talking about strengthening your voice. Now, strengthening your voice or strengthening your ability to lead a song, your ability to sing, um, I always say if you can, get a songbook. Let whoever in leadership know you have the songbook. You're taking it home. Not that you're stealing it. Um, you you want to do that so you're right um, with the congregation. So you take that home. You go. You rehearse. You practice. You go over the songs. You go in the index. You highlight the songs that you know. Or you go through the page. You circle the songs that you know. And you make sure you become uh, familiar with them so that you can pick up the songbook and you can say, oh, let's turn to him 646. Oh, just a little talk with Jesus. Let's turn to him 173. Uh, he's my king. Him 202. Um, uh, anywhere is home. Let's go to him 356. Uh, one with the Savior, we want to be wonderful there. So, you know, like, and I even started singing the songs without knowing, this is my Bible anyway. But, I mean, you, you want to become familiar with that, and you do that by participating. And it's important for you to participate every time. I've never had a bad worship experience, even when I wasn't a song leader or when I wasn't leading song service. And someone else was up there because I'm actively participating. Because the songs, they, when you, when you get deeper into the Word, the songs mean more. So you're always participating. You're always full force. Which means if you're not the song leader, you're the loudest one in there. And you might not be the loudest one in there, but you're the loudest one in there because you're focusing on praising God. And that's the mindset that you need to have in practicing. You want to be an active participant. The second way of practicing is practicing privately at home. Why this is important is... Um, your voice will over time get stronger, but if you're looking at really developing your voice, this now, you have to treat it like a muscle. Now, me, when it comes to like my bicep or my tricep or my delts or what have you, I'm, I'm very, very, uh, for even my forearm and my wrist, I'm very focused on um, developing the muscles. So I treat this the same way I treat these. Um, important and imperative. Why is that? Because sometimes, uh, not, not even sometimes, uh, it's important and it's imperative that you treat it like a muscle because it is a muscle. 
Um, you're going to use this a lot as a worship leader. You're going to use it very impromptly as a worship leader. Um, one of the things I suggest to any new song leader um, is, and I'm going to put a video, I'm going to tag it somewhere in the general frame, probably over here, um, a scale that I used to do when I wanted to improve. When I was 28, um, I, I, catch this, for 14 years I was leading song service. When I was 14 to when I was 28 and it caught up with me. Caught up with me so bad, every time I'd get up there, it'd be weeks. I, I didn't sing for three weeks and I'd get up there and all of a sudden I'd get up there. <laughs> what? Because I wasn't caring for my voice. And so I realized, one, as I got older, I had to care for my body just as a whole. Um, because just in, in, just in terms of, of weight training or strength training or cardio exercise or anything like that, you can do a ton of things when you're younger. And then as soon as you hit about 25, 26, you start to feel it, but you might ignore it. And then one day it slapped you in your face like it did me. Now, it slapped me in my face when I was age, when I was age 28. <laughs> And I had to change some things. And I had to monitor some things. So when we talk about practice, I'm going to talk about practice. We're going to talk a little bit about diet as well. But in practicing, um, you want to pick at least one time a week. One time a week. One time a week. Maybe two times a week. Now, uh, as a novice, I say start with one time a week. Then you could step it up to twice a week. But if you step it up to twice a week, you don't want it to be like a, a Tuesday and a Thursday. You want it to be like a Monday and a Thursday, giving ample time between the two. Um, because you really want Now, if you're a current song leader, um, if you lead song service on a Sunday, you want to give yourself a full day of rest. You don't want to overexert yourself vocally. Now, if you're in a position at work where you are very vocal, this may be a bit difficult and you might have to do one time a week and you have to do it in a very simple fashion. So the, the link that uh, is going to pop up over here, or if it's not over there, hopefully it's still up here right now, but the link that's right up here um, is a simple scale. It's one minute long. You do the scale for one minute. Um, we've all heard scales. Uh, that's something to warm up the lips and all that stuff. But I've done it where I've, I've, I've been to where you have Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Or, 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 Da, 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 The scale. And it keeps moving forward. But I've done it with the lips and it comes to... I'm not going to do it now. But um, there are techniques. And that right there warms up the lips and the mouth and the throat. And with, with you going up and down. Now you're going up and going down. Now that scale that's posted over here is one minute long. Now it's one minute long and the rest period is five minutes. That's for the amateur singer, amateur song leader. The rest is five minutes. Why? Because after one minute, you're going to feel it. And if you don't feel it, it means you might be a little bit more advanced. Still give it the five minutes. After the second time, you might feel it more. But what this is doing is this is warming your voice up and it's opening. Sometimes in singing, and, and this is very important, I learned this in college uh, when I was in a music course, and uh, we were singing the scales, and we went, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Well, we break. There was a point in time I couldn't do anything I just did. We break. And you'd hear, and it's like, ah! and what happened was the muscle just expanded to a point you never, you never reached before. So the more you do it, the more comfortable you get doing it. This increases. Your strength increases. And there is, of course, the theology and the thought. And I call it the theology as a joke. But the thought, the ideology that, oh, well, if you can sing classical music, you can sing anything. If you can sing, you can sing. I'm not going to tell you to get in any particular special. When you sing, you must uh, put your shoulders back, push your chest out. And when you go up there, all day. No. Sing like you sing. Sing like you normally would sing. Because to put all this extra stress, you need all this extra stress and extra muscles involved in it, it, it becomes so frustrating and so physically laborious. Song leading in and of itself is laborious. But to be up there and to really be engaging so many muscles in the no, you ain't gotta do that, okay? Um and that's that's myth buster right i gotta throw that out there because that that's some nonsense we'll get some more myths that are out there as well but you want to do that maybe once or twice a week and in doing that it, it it really strengthens your range from right where you are so if you're really deep start there if you're really high start there you can work up you can work down do it both ways 
But that scale is posted so that you're able to participate in that, reach out, get there, and then you can rehearse with it. Um, you can, if you, you, you can rehearse with it. With it, there are actually singing programs out there. Some people like to do singing coaches. I actually thought about getting a singing coach, and then I there was a singing success software that was out there. I really enjoyed it, and I and I went to get that. And and you know, it's it's something. Um, well, I'm going to get that um, because I do so much and so much with the the scales and so forth that the scales has really helped me where there are times I'm able to belt out a note that I you know there was a point in time I couldn't I couldn't um like for example uh, we're singing a song if for the price we have striven after our labors are whole that was it I could never oh well I'm going to demonstrate this if for the price we have striven after I live. I couldn't do that at one point in time. Working the scales over time allowed me to hit that range. So if it was okay, heaven's on the other side, heaven's on the other side, heaven's on the other side. A false solo is a false voice. That's not what I just did. I actually hit that note. Um, so it's 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 very. Uh, it's very good for the song leader to be able to expand their range just a bit because it'll help them be able to garner okay sopranos meet me here altos meet me here um, tenors meet me here and I'm a baritone when I speak I actually prefer to sing bass but um, and that's another video we'll do talking about bass but um, I did want to kind of bust some myths and that's just a simple program um, as you get deeper into it, I'll post some more videos about some other practicing methods. Um, we're going to talk to some other song leaders and interview them and talk about the methods that they uh, use as well when improving their voice.